well, I already have my word of the year thing for the week. So it's Saturday morning and welcome back to another weekly vlog. I was supposed to kick this one off leaving a workout class that it's this like boot camp circuit class. It's very close to my apartment and I really enjoy it. I enjoy it, but it's really hard and I'm definitely always in like the bottom percentile of skill in that class. Like it, there's like really, really athletic people that take it, but it always makes me feel really accomplished at the end. So for whatever reason, in my head, in my planner, I have that the class is at 9.30. So I get there at about 9.23 and 24, and I go up to the desk and I'm like, I'm here for the 9.30 Edwards. And they go, uh, there was a nine o'clock class and then there's a 10 o'clock class. So I pull up my class pass app. It was a nine o'clock class. I was signed up for a nine o'clock class that I showed up 20 minutes late to. And at first she was like, well, the 10 o'clock is full, so I can put you on a wait list, and then you can maybe get in. And I was like, well, I don't really wanna wait 30 minutes, and I have plans today, I need to like get home and shower. And so honestly, the old me would have just turned around and gone home and been like, all right, well, whatever, I guess I'm not working out today. And then this studio has classes, these like boot camp classes, but they also have a gym attached, and mostly it's used for like personal training. There's personal trainers there that you can pay and and that is what that space is for but she was like we could just apply your class and you could use that space and like work out on your own and I was like well it's better than nothing and definitely is gonna be more than I would do if I just went home so I did it I did about 30 minutes on the elliptical I did like a hill cycle and then I did some push-ups and I did some planks and it's probably not as good of a workout as if I'd actually taken the class but it's something, right? It's progress. So then I was thinking, perfect, I have a thing. I have a thing for my word of the year that I can talk about. But then I also thought, I know that this is the third weekly blog and my third time that I'm using health as my example for embracing my word of the year. And it applies to way more than health. So I promise that either later this week or definitely in next week's weekly blog, I will try to find an embracing my word of the year for one of my other goals that's not my health goal. All right, so now it's time to head home and shower and get ready. And then I have a fun day planned with my mom. We're going to my favorite brunch spot. I talked about this on my Things I Love in New York video that I posted about a week ago. It's my favorite and I'm so excited. And then we're doing a wine tour. It is a walking tour and it's a little cold for a walking tour, but, but the wine will help, right? And she doesn't know that yet. She doesn't know what we're doing. And then we have a little bit of a break in between that we need to either, we'll see how we're feeling. If we're starving, we'll go find food or we'll just go find a bar or something. And then the Cowboys game. Oh my God. Nervous, excited. Fingers crossed. So when I came home and told this crazy lady that my workout wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be, she was like, well, let's walk to brunch. And I was like, it's on the other side of the park. Like, it's on the west side. She's like, yeah, but how far can it really be? And so I look it up and it's a mile and a half. And she's like, oh, come on. That's like 30 minutes. Let's just walk. Let's earn our sangria. I mean, it's cold, but we're walking. All champagne is sparkling wine. Not all sparkling wine is champagne. Not all sparkling wine is champagne. <laughs>
today has been pretty relaxing. We didn't do a whole lot. My mom and I, we slept in and then we just sort of laid in bed and chatted for a while and I was not feeling too great after yesterday's festivities. <laughs> we had fun yesterday, but I definitely was hurting a little bit today. So we relaxed and we went and got some breakfast, brunch, lunch. I mean, we we ate breakfast food, but we it was like noon that we went. And then we came home, watched some HGTV, more chatting, just kind of relaxing. I think my mom wanted to do maybe a little bit more today, but I just, I, <laughs> I wanted to lay on my couch and do nothing and snuggle my kitty. Anyways, and then she dyed my hair, that's why I have wet hair. It was a little soon. I usually dye it every four weeks just because red fades and my hair grows pretty fast, so my roots come out and it fades. So it was only about just over three weeks, like not even three and a half that she, since the last time that she dyed it. But I know that I'm going to see her in a month for the Chicago Planner Conference when I'm in Chicago. And so I'll just have her do it then. And that timing will be perfect. So it's a little early, but it's all right. I'm glad that she did it. And then when I rinsed it out, we like timed it. So like right when it was time for me to go rinse it out, she left actually for the airport. And then I took my phone free a bubble bath for the week. I actually forgot to put bubbles in it. So it was just a phone free bath, but it was really awesome and super relaxing. And I read and then for some of it, honestly, I just like laid there in the silence and it was so nice. So but I need to find some energy to get up off my couch because there's just a couple things that I need to get done tonight before work starts tomorrow. Sam gets home tonight and then he actually leaves again tomorrow for Houston. So um, it kind of sucks, but I'm excited to at least just have one night with him. So I need to tidy up the apartment. I need to, I actually have got a box from Ulta. I need to open that and I need to get something filmed. And those are the big ones. That's, I mean, opening my box from old is not a big deal, but tidying up the apartment and getting something filmed and getting tomorrow's video prepped is, those are the priorities. So I mentioned that I got ooh, ooh, a package from Ulta and I actually had a gift card for Ulta and I do have an Ulta very close to my apartment, but you can't use Ebates when you go in store. And so because the gift card I knew would get me to free shipping, well then I'm just gonna order it online and get Ebates and all it is is basically gonna delay my satisfaction. So if you don't know what Ebates is, it's a website that you can use to shop other websites. You just like go through Ebates to go to these shops and then you get cash back. And the amount changes over time and the pretty much every store I feel like is on that website. But if you're interested, I will link below. It's a referral link, so I don't, I don't remember. You get five bucks, I get five bucks maybe if you purchase through my referral link. But it's it's great. And so I think Ulta was like 4% back. Oh, I was like, well, I'm gonna get my 4% if I'm gonna be buying from Ulta anyway. So a couple things I threw in here. Let me get this all out and then I'll tell you what I got. So the thing I knew I needed was this. And I literally just used the last bit of it today. So I am like, I need to open the Ulta box because I need this for tomorrow. So this is the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I use this to take my makeup off. I talked about it in a monthly favorites video before. So I will link that if you're interested in like what my total thoughts on that. This is also a replacement of something that I use and love. This is my favorite, favorite bronzer. My only complaint is that it is very soft. And so when it, you get it down and there's only a little bit left, if you travel with it, it's gonna break. And so that's what happened. It broke while I was traveling over Christmas and I just haven't replaced it yet. I've been like very carefully dipping into the broken pieces. And then I got this concealer, which I used to use a lot and I sort of an old favorite. I've been loving the Tarte Concealer. I talked about it in a favorites video too. And I do, I love the coverage and like the staying power, but I think it's drying out my under eyes. I don't know. I could be totally crazy, but I'm going to go back to this one for a little bit and hope that it kind of makes my under eyes not hate, my, hate me so much. These were buy one, get one free. And I needed something to get me to the $50 and I go through these things like water so I can always use some extra ones and then this was the freebie that they threw in here it's a bunch of different masks so there's like a lip mask and then a bubble mask that's the new thing now I feel like bubble masks so I know I mentioned this on Instagram like on Instagram stories when it happened and I think I've mentioned it in a couple of vlogs but for the past six months the subway stop that is near my office when I say near I mean like a block has been closed for construction sorry they've been calling them system renovations or stop renovations or enhancements something like enhancements station enhancements like that no it's construction just call it what it is so i had to walk to a different station which is an additional five blocks 
and it it is added time to my commute yes i'm getting in my steps and that's all positive but it adds time both directions and when the weather's not great it's been not fun especially like this morning i was like it's freaking freezing and so originally it was supposed to be done in december and then of course it wasn't in december because the mta is never on time and then they said mid-january so that's pretty vague but today got a notification that as of 3 p.m. the station is open and ready for business so I don't have to walk as far like we're almost there and I turned this on as soon as I left my office so it just it makes things so much easier it's gonna be a lot harder to get my steps in but when it's cold outside and when I'm in a rush it's uh it's gonna be nice to have my station back is like super staticky. I don't know if it's my jacket or my earmuffs, but it's also so soft. The conditioner that comes with the hair dye is like the best conditioner ever, but I also left it on for a long time yesterday. Like I took my, I took my phone free bath after I dyed my hair. So I put on the conditioner that it says to leave on for like five minutes and I left it on for like 30. So that might also be why my hair is so soft. I'm not sitting down here to tell you about my soft hair. We are here to talk about my routines. I've mentioned it in a couple of places and I posted about it on Instagram. I also talked about it in last week's weekly vlog and then I mentioned in my plan with me that I wanted to sort of reassess them because they were not, the way that I had mapped them out and set these alarms on my phone, it wasn't happening. And there were a number of reasons that it wasn't happening. I thought that the biggest reason it wasn't happening was I was just trying to do too much at once, like trying to add on too many habits. I think I was looking at them as these big habits, morning routine, evening routine, when in reality, it's like three to four new habits that I'm trying to add and that is ridiculous. But honestly, when I thought about it a little bit more, I realized that actually like trying to break it down and do each piece at a time isn't isn't gonna solve the problems that were the true problems. So the true problems, which I will also tell you how I'm gonna solve them, or at least attempt to solve them. So the first one is, I don't know how much time things actually take. Okay, I have all these things that I want to be a part of my morning routine, but I don't actually know how long those activities take. Now, some of them obviously are, like I'm dictating the amount of time, right? Like read for 30 minutes. Well, I'm dictating that that's 30 minutes. But you know what, if one of the other things that I wanna do takes more than more time than I'd originally given it, then maybe I'm only gonna read for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Let me tell you all the problems and then I will tell you the solution. The next one is that I was being overly ambitious in a couple of different ways, not in the way that I was just trying to do too much at once. I was being overly ambitious, trying to go to bed way too early, given some things in my life. One of them being, there are other things that I want to do in the evening before bed. And by the time I get home from work, I can't do all of those things. So you know what, it might be okay that I go to bed a little bit later and then squish the morning routine and cut some of those things out. I was giving myself an hour for uh, like YouTube time and there are some days that I could, there's, I have work that I could do for an hour in the morning, but sometimes I would rather do that work at night so that exporting and uploading and those processes that I can't control that take forever can happen overnight. So I decided, to kind of shift that around a little bit. The other thing that just made it a little bit ambitious was that things change. And especially when you live with another person, sometimes he has to come home later or get up earlier than those times that you had set or he wants to sleep in and you wanna wake up. So that was another problem that I have, that I have a mini solution to, but not a long-term one. Okay, and then the last one, which kind of goes with that, is just consistency and being able to do it every single night. And because consistency does build habits. But at the same time, I want to give myself flexibility if I'm not consistent. So I, I'm still kind of struggling with that one. But let me tell you about some of the solutions. Okay, so the first solution is not really a solution, but a situation. And that is that Sam is out of town all week. He's gone. He's not here. So I can be in total control of the time that I go to bed and the time that I wake up and anything I want to do, I have total control. So I think I'm, I'm just really excited to have this week to figure out what I want. And now that may not work long term 
depending on his schedule. And I realize that and I'm going to have to be flexible and I'm going to have to figure that out when he gets back. I can spend the next seven days really honing in on what I want and figuring out what works best for me. So the next solution is about not knowing how long something takes. The best way to figure that out is just to track it. So I'm going to make this little chart, which I, I'm going to do as soon as I finish telling you about it. And it's going to have all the things that I want to be a part of my routine. And I'm going to have a space for every day of the week. And then as I do them, I'm going to track how long it takes. And I am anticipating, I'm hoping that some of them are more and some of them are less. So that at the end of the day, I'm still like going to bed and waking up. But we'll see. I The most important thing for me, honestly, is that I'm figuring out how long everything takes. So part of my evening routine, one of them is to play with Charlie. Well, I think I originally had 15 minutes for it. She does not want to play for 15 minutes. She really doesn't. She wants like a good five minutes of like me running around the house with her and like playing with the toy and like being crazy. And then she's like kind of tired. She's like, I'm kind of over it. So I don't need 15 minutes for that. So what I'm going to do this week, I think I've allotted 10, but I'm going to play until I feel like she's kind of over it. That's what I'm going to do every night. I'm going to play until I feel like she's over it. And then the next one is prep for the next day. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know how long that's going to take. Like I want to get my clothes out. I want to get my planner set up. I want to check off anything I can check off. I want to make sure like I feel ready for the next day. And I think right now I've allotted 15 for that. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad. And so I think because I wasn't ready to go when the alarms were going off last week, that was part of the struggle too. So this week I'm going to focus on just tracking them and then designing a routine around that. And then kind of like I already mentioned, I moved the time back. So I haven't really talked about sleep. I've done a lot of like research on sleep and the average human sleeps in 90 minute cycles. So it is better for you to, depends on your definition of better. It is, you're less tired when you wake up if you wake up in 90 minute cycles. Now, does that mean that over the course of the day, it's better for you to get less sleep? No, or especially over the long term. But for that morning, like in that moment, having six hours is better than having seven because you are not in the middle of a sleep cycle when you wake up after six than when you wake up after seven. So given that information and the fact that I know that my body likes to sleep and I can, yes, can I function on six hours of sleep? Yes, but my body would prefer to get more. Actually, my body prefer, if I had all the time in the world, I would get nine hours sleep a night. I, my that is like my body wakes up without an alarm is nine hours of sleep. That is not realistic during the week. And I know that if I want to do more than just work and be an adult and sleep, I, I can't sleep nine hours during the week. It's just not possible. So I, my goal is to get seven and a half hours of sleep. And that includes a 30 minute buffer, like getting into bed 30 minutes before that seven and a half would start. So what I was doing was with a 5.30 a.m. wake up time was getting in bed at 9.30 and aiming to be asleep by 10. And getting into bed at 9.30 every night was was hard. So I'm pushing that back to 10 and waking up at 6. And then in my morning routine, I have cut out that 30 minutes from a couple of different places. question for you. So I was thinking when I was setting up the camera to film me emptying the dishwasher and I was like, I look like a huge bum. Like I literally am still in my pajamas. Although I put this sweater on because it was cold and I was like, I just, I look ridiculous, but I honestly am more productive when I am in comfy clothes. That's just how I am. I think I, I understand the being professional in the workplace and the benefits that that has, and I'm fine to get dressed and go to work. When I'm at home, I am much more productive if I am in my pajamas. Sam is the total opposite. So if he's gonna have a productive morning, he needs to get up and shower and get ready, and maybe not necessarily put on like his his work clothes, but he needs to shower and and get out of his pajamas, and then he can do productive things in the morning before he goes to work. 
So I just want to know, which one are you? Are you somebody who, and this could be in the morning or in the evening, but see in the evening, I'm guilty of not putting the comfy clothes on. Like in the evening, I will just keep doing things in my work clothes and I won't change out of them. But in the morning, I want to keep my comfy clothes on as long as humanly possible. And I think that that makes me more productive, but I don't know. And Sam's the other way around. He needs to shower and get out of his pajamas. Otherwise, he will crawl back into bed. So let me know in the comments, which one are you? Are you more productive when you are in clothes and showered and ready to go? Or are you more productive when you are in sweatpants and fuzzy sweatshirts? I hope you're enjoying the couch background that I keep using for my vlogs. So today was really productive. It was a really busy day at work. Lots of meetings, lots of stuff. And then I was really productive after work to the point that it is now 8 o'clock and I'm done with my to-do list that I had for today. I feel like I need to caveat that. There are obviously lots of things that I would like to work on or accomplish, but the things that I had put on today's to-do list are done. So I was going to do my phone-free bath for the week over the weekend, but I think, I can't decide, can't decide if I want to edit tonight and get some of that out of the way or if I want to go ahead and take my phone free bath. I also want to try and get to bed actually early tonight. The routine stuff went well yesterday and like last night and then this morning and again I'm just trying to get a feel for how long things are taking so if it's the timing doesn't match up perfectly like today I actually left for work a little bit earlier than I intended. I was all of 15 minutes but still like that could have been 15 minutes I was doing something else or I could have slept in so I again this week is just about figuring it out but tomorrow I have an event at 8 in the morning I'm going to have to adjust my morning routine and what I was thinking was just cut out the YouTube thing the hour I'm going to spend on YouTube just cut that off or really I only need to cut it no yeah, I need to cut it out a whole hour because I need to leave by 7.30 and normally have me leaving at 8.30. But what I was thinking is if I could get to bed even earlier tonight, then maybe I could get up at 5. It's a little crazy. But then I could at least have a half hour. I could always cut my reading too. Okay, I made a decision. No bath tonight because I want to start my routine a little bit early and hope to go to bed a little bit early so that I can get up early that's the best option. So I'm going to edit for 30 minutes and then I'm going to start my routine at 8.30. Hello. So I mentioned last night that I have an event this morning. Also, I lost my tripod thingy for my phone on the subway yesterday. So I'm just holding it with my hand, which is means it's going to be a little bit more shaky and kind of a weird angle. But just FYI, order a new one from Amazon. It should be here tomorrow. So the event I'm going to today is hosted by The Skim which if you've never heard of it, it is an email subscription service where they send you an email every day. I know that's not what you wanna hear, but an email every weekday. And it is a summary of all of the major events going on in the world, like the news and the things that you should know about. But they do it in sort of a very concise and somewhat some snarky and very pop culture way. Like they reference things that you know and love when they're talking about something really serious to sort of help you digest it and understand it. And I have been a subscriber for years, like since I became an adult, it feels like. And because I have shared it a lot, there's like a referral link and you don't get anything. Like, okay, I take it back. I got a free tote bag for hitting, I think 10 referrals or something. And I think once I hit 50, I get like a shirt. I don't need a shirt that says the skim. I don't, I don't share it. I don't share my link to get those things, but one of the nice things that has come like come from me sharing my link is once I hit 10, I got to be a part of this group that they have called the Skim Ambassadors. Clever, right? So when I signed up to like become part of the group, one of the things they ask you is, where do you live? And would you be interested in attending events? And obviously, since I live in New York, there are bound to be events. And I said yes. And so I was invited to one this morning. That is breakfast with Rebecca Minkoff, which if you don't know who she is, Google her, she's a famous designer. All right, it's quieter than the subway escalator. So anyways, I'm very excited to just see what the event's about. I don't know how many people are gonna be there. I don't know really what it's gonna be like. And I don't know if it's gonna be more of a, she's speaking, is it a Q and A session? Is it just sort of a coffee get to know you? I don't know, we'll find out.
welcome Rebecca Minkoff to this live episode of Skimmed from the Couch. In 2018, Rebecca launched the Female Founder Collective to support and invest in women-led businesses, which we are so excited to hear more about and very excited that you launched. So let's get into it. And then it's also a collective, so for these female founders to connect, commiserate, help each other. So we've had a lot of momentum. We just signed a partnership with Visa that we announced two days ago. Congratulations. Um, thank you. They're very committed to empowering female founders, so they're gonna help with programming and education. And so you'll see more things launched um, as we go forward. And when you say uh, that there are about 11 million female-owned um, businesses, how do we support those? How do we make sure that they are the, the next success stories? I think where you can now seek out and Google, you know, when you're gonna buy something or subscribe to something that is a women-owned business, I'm hoping that by International Women's Day, you know, we're gonna be publishing a database of all the 3,000 women plus that have joined of their businesses. My brother was like, you know what? Why don't you just go on a real leave? We'll hire a woman to do the day-to-day -day of the design and see what happens. And I was like, oh, that's scary. <laughs> oh man, you know, who's gonna, who's gonna feel that fabric and like pick that Pantone color that only I can do. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite book to recommend for female inspiration? I'm gonna be honest, I have not read a book <laughs> in about five years. You know, as a woman, it's sometimes hard to work with other women. What is your best advice for fostering a supportive working relationship with other women? This was submitted by Caitlin. So I think that um, in being in an environment, there's 89 of us and 80 of us are women. There's different dynamics that occur with women, uh, predominantly women-owned companies that don't occur when it's mixed or the other, the other way. And there's a lot of political chessboarding. There's a lot of throwing women under the bus. And it's unfortunate because there are no seats at the table. So I am always wanting to ensure that like, you can be nice, you can help another woman. This is not a popularity contest. Um, and I think it needs to start you know, in elementary schools with girls not just doing ballet, but like, can we be on soccer teams? And learn how to work as a team. And that if, there, if you don't feel there is two seats at the table, like, damn it, drag another seat up for our favorite and last segment, which is the lightning round. Uh -oh. uh, so uh, we're gonna ask you questions, you answer as fast as you can. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. What do you think you were going to be when you grew up? A dancer. Ooh. College major. Didn't go to college. First job. Babysitter. Worst job. Ice cream scooper. Um, what drives you? Um, I would say I would have answered that differently five years ago, but being responsible for three humans um, really drives me, not only just to like be able to afford, but also like leaving this place a better place for them. You know, when I look around as a mom, I'm like, my number one question for my nanny is like, how fast can you run out of a playground holding kids? Like, that's a messy <laughs> question to ask for me. <laughs> so, I, you know, I want to leave this world a, a much safer and better place, so whatever I can do, that really drives me to create a place where hopefully there's more positivity. Well, that was awesome. I did not actually know that I was walking into a live podcast taping, but it was, it was really awesome. And I think that even though she's in a totally different industry than anything I have ever touched or probably will ever touch, but it was just, it was so, so beneficial to hear her story and just, I, I don't know, you're always so inspired and motivated by women who didn't know necessarily what they wanted to do or got there in the non-traditional way, it, it's exciting. So of course now I'm all pumped up to go sit at my desk for my nine to five job. So that's, that's not all that exciting. I'd really like to call in sick and go home and hustle, but sorry. What I thought was going to be a like retirement cocktail hour turned out to be a retirement sit down dinner. So I got home way later than I thought I would. Like I didn't think I was going to have time to come home and like do anything productive, but I didn't think I was going to be getting home at 9:30 when it started at 5:30. And then I called Sam because he called me while I was there and so we chatted for about a half hour. So it is 
and I'm not gonna do any of my routine. My little notepad that I set up that I was like ready to attack and track things. My nighttime activities will just only have three days to average out because I'm not doing any of it tonight. I'm so tired. I'm not gonna wash my face. Don't yell at me, Leon. I know, I know I need to wash my face, but I just don't have the energy. And I didn't even drink at the retirement party. It was so good. But I'm just exhausted. I got up at five. I'm tired. We'll see. We'll see if I can muster up enough energy to wash my face. And then I'll brush my teeth. I probably won't floss my teeth. Um, but I'm not going to do the rest of it. I'm not going to track the time. And that's just going to be that. Start back up on the routines tomorrow. Which reminded me. So I almost yesterday or the day before debated putting the like morning routine and evening routine in my power sheets as like a daily activity. And even though like the first half of the month would be blank because I just added it. I was like, well, that, it's fine. It'll motivate me to do it the rest of, of the month. And then I was like, put what is going to constitute a checkoff? Like if your morning routine goes slightly deviated like this morning because I had to leave early. So I cut a section down or your eating routine gets diverted because somebody calls you like what would make you check it off versus not check it off. I just felt I felt like it was so arbitrary and and my goal even once I nail down the times is not to do it perfectly it's to just do it and do it better than I was doing it which was like nothing I had no really I mean my routine was like get up and and go to work like I didn't have a routine for either of them so I just again all about progress right and I'm not gonna write them down as things to do because it's just so not specific now maybe next month I'll add some of the specific things I'm trying to incorporate into my routines on my checklist and track and track that onto my daily checklist and then track that. But I'm not going to add just overarching AM and PM routine to my tending list. That's just ridiculous. Oh, also today I got added. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of, oh my gosh, you're so young. And I know that. I know that I'm young and I have so much time ahead of me. But I did get an invite on Facebook today to a Facebook group for my 10 year high school reunion. And yes, I understand that I am young, but I am, it's still one of those things I feel like that I've been graduated from high school for 10 years this year. It's kind of crazy. So I'm hoping to go. I, I mean, I feel like I, I feel like I should. And I don't talk to a ton of people from high school. I mean, I had good friends in high school. I had a great group of friends. I was part of the, like the theater crew. I did theater in high school and I had a lot of great friends. And then I just didn't really stay close with that many people afterwards. There have a couple people that I will reach out to and, and a couple that I will try and see when I'm in town every once in a while. But I think it would be fun to see everybody. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, obviously it depends what the dates are. I have a lot of commitments that I've already made for the year. So if the dates don't work, the dates don't work. I'm assuming I'll be in Chicago. So if it's a weekend, I don't have a conflict. Like a flight to Chicago is very easy and I have a place to stay. So we'll see. But that was just kind of like, I got home and like, and then I talked to Sam and then I was like already kind of tired and dreading it. And and then I like checked my phone because that's what I do. I just freaking check social media. And there it was. And I was like, oh man, that's a thing. That's a 2019 thing. All right. So I want to tell you about something that I decided to start today over on Instagram. It is called Thankful Thursday. And I was inspired because I've actually been listening to a lot of podcasts, which is not my normal MO. If you know me, I've never really been a podcast person. I tried and it took me a while to figure out what the right like times in my life were to embrace them. So if you have any great podcast recommendations, please let me know in the comments. I am always like, I have lots that I like want to listen to and have on my app that like I want to listen to, but I would be happy to take more recommendations. Anyways, a lot of the podcasts have been talking about how a big part of living life to its fullest and being happy and where you are and living in the moment has been about gratitude and not gratitude in the sense of, oh, I'm thankful that I have a roof over my head and food and a good job. And I, not that I'm not thankful for those things. Obviously I'm incredibly thankful for those things, but it's about the other stuff. Like instead of having this mindset of like, I can't wait for the next step in whatever, whatever it is, if it's a relationship or a, a job promotion or whatever, like it's about being thankful and, and having gratitude for where you're at in that moment. With that said, I decided that the best way for me to accomplish this 
was with some social media accountability. So every Thursday, I'm going to be posting on Instagram something that I am thankful for, whether it's a person or an object or an experience or a memory or whatever. There's a number of them and I'm ready to be full of gratitude. So I invite you to join me. Go follow me on Instagram at Plan With Lincoln and let me know in the comments of that post what you're thankful for this week. So I also got some new things in the mail today from Erin Condren. It came in a big box, but some of it was gifts. So I had to take that out. Couldn't show that here because I'm not giving them before this vlog goes live. And then mostly I just don't want to carry that huge box home. It's just, it's just a lot of work to bring it home from work. So I got some of the new washi tape, which is in the hexagon, the new hexagon pattern, which oh, I'm obsessed with the hexagon pattern. I thought that bright colored rainbow triangle was going to be my favorite new pattern last year, but Oh, it's really pretty y'all. And then the heart one, the like heart pattern, which I didn't love when they first came out with it, like especially on the cover, but I love the washi. I will probably use this for Valentine's Day, except Valentine's Day is the same week as the Chicago Planner Conference. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do like a heart rainbow week. Okay, and then I got another one of these Share the Love journals. So I had originally gotten one from Sam and Erin Condren. And that one, if you saw my post on Instagram, I've actually started filling out for Sam. This one, I'm going to fill out for myself. I don't know, I haven't decided yet what, how I'm gonna prioritize that and when I'm gonna do it, but, and when I'm gonna do it. Like I already have a lot of things I try to do every day. So it might not be now, it might be later in the year, but I bought this one to write to myself. And then I got another set of the sticker sheets because, I mean, come on, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Look how cute they are. So I got, because I want to use the stickers as I fill out the book. So I got one for me and then one for the one for Sam. And then I got one of these journals because, oh my gosh, if you watched, what video was that? It was my December favorites video. I talked about how I do time tracking in the Erin Condren Jot Your Thought Journal and how I thought that the only one on the website that was in Dot Grid was the Ojoy. And to be honest, the only one that's labeled Dot Grid on the website is the Ojoy one. But somebody told me that she ordered this twice and it was Dot Grid both times. So thank you so much. It's Dot Grid and I'm excited about this pattern. And then the last thing is these little dividers that go, let me go grab the box. Okay, so this is the box and they have this in a couple different patterns on the site and the dividers are for this box. So they go in here and the box is actually meant for sticker sheets. So that's like what it's sized for. I am gonna use this box for something else. Once I get it all set up, I will share that with y'all, but I needed some of these little dividers to help me. So that is the last thing that I got. And then like I said, I got a few gifts as well. Much feels better than walking out of the office on a Friday, except maybe walking out of the office on a Friday when it's a long weekend. I am so happy that it's Friday. It has been a long week, although today flew by. So given that I had 
zero meetings. And really the only times I left my desk were to go to the gym or to go to the bathroom. I am shocked at how quickly today flew by. All of a sudden I looked down and it was 3.30 and I was like, what? Oh no, I'm not gonna lie, that last like hour and a half sort of crawled, crawled by. But it's done, it's freedom. And I have a couple errands I need to run. I, I'm gonna go to Ulta. I don't know if that's really considered an errand, except there's something I need at Ulta. And then I need to go to the grocery store to pick up a couple things for something I am planning on Sunday. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna talk about it or just wait for you to see it in the next weekly vlog when it happens on Sunday. But I'm gonna go run those two errands and then go home and um, paint my nails. I've talked about this before, but I am a ex biter And so I pick off my own polish. I did it today at work. <laughs> it happens when I'm bored. That's what happened between 3.30 and 5. I picked off all my nail polish. So I need to repeat my nails because I'm going to a birthday party tonight. I would like them to look nice. You know that feeling when there's an unexpected box outside your door and you get all excited and you're like, I don't know what it is. Who sent me something? And then you look at the addresses and it is the fantasy football trophy for Sam because he won his fantasy football league. No, Charlie, it's not for you either best part about the bar that my friend well actually the best part the friend that I whose birthday we're going to celebrate lives two doors down from me so naturally she chose a bar that's really close to our apartments so it is two blocks from our apartment so I'm excited I decided to eat dinner before I left so that I wouldn't feel tempted to eat bar food and I'm gonna try not to drink because this place also does brunch so I know that they have tea and coffee and so I'm gonna try and get tea. I'm going to try and get hot tea if they have it. If not, I'll do decaf coffee, but I'm going to try and get something to drink that's not alcohol that I can hold and sip on while I'm hanging out with everybody. So, cause honestly, I don't, I don't want the alcohol. I don't want the calories. I don't want to feel icky tomorrow. I have a lot of things I want to do tomorrow, but when you're in a bar, it's hard to not hold something in your hand. And I, yeah, I mean, I can hold water. Like that's the other, that's the second option I have. And I don't like bubbles, so I can't even get just like a diet soda or like a seltzer water to make it look like it's a drink because I just don't like bubbles. Well, it is almost one o'clock, definitely way later than I planned to stay out, but I had a lot of fun. And honestly, not drinking was not a big deal. Also, I spent $3 because all I had was tea. I mean, I also bought the birthday girl drink, but that was like, th that goes in the birthday category, not in the drink category. But honestly, I, so I told everybody once, like individually, when I would talk to somebody and they'd be like, oh, you're just drinking water. And I'm like, or, oh, that's tea. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm not drinking. And honestly, after that, they didn't pressure me. Like, it was really nice that nobody pressured me and we were having a lot of fun and the bar was playing great music and it was fun to just like hang out with everybody. And so I honestly, like, it was not a big deal until <laughs> once we hit a certain point, then it was like almost too blatantly different. Like everybody else was very drunk and I was totally sober. Like it was one thing when I was sober and they had a couple of drinks. Once they were like really drunk, then it was sort of like, it wasn't as fun. Not, not that I wasn't having fun, but like they were having more fun. <laughs> and, and then it ended with somebody spilling a very full tequila soda all over my jacket. Yes, the one I'm wearing. A bartender was very nice and gave me a wet cloth that helped clean it up. I think it still smells like tequila and it's going to take a little bit of work to get it better. I might just take it to the dry cleaners and say, screw it. But anyway, that was the moment I was like, I think it's time for me to go home. Plus I'm signed up for an 11 a.m. workout class, which I didn't think was going to be that big of a deal, like 11 a.m. But I guess I didn't think I was going to stay out till one. So technically I am not ending this vlog on Friday night. I'm ending it very early Saturday morning. That is going to be the end of this weekly vlog. So let me know in the comments how you applied your word of the year this week. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and weekly vlogs on Sundays. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning the class. Whoa, excuse me, Mr. Truck. I'm gonna see if I have purple teeth. Huh? I was trying to see if I have purple teeth. Oh. Uh, let me keep my, and then I, no, I'll check them off. 
I have me leaving at 5, at 5.30. I just want the kid to smell me. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Be, be gratuitous. It's our word. Once I was, the, then, once they got your word of the week this year, your word of the week this year, I am oh, so cold sober.